Hey everybody, Jeff Antoniak here, Digging Deeper Jazz. Welcome in. All right, so today I want to talk about these scary altered chords that we've been seeing and trying to avoid. <laughs> We're going to get this figured out. Uh, now, I want to tell you, these videos are for all instruments. I know I've told you that before. The other day, I got a really, really nice uh, comment on YouTube. It's a guy who studied piano professionally at the Grove School of Music in Los Angeles and you know, saying that these videos are, he's learning more from these videos than any piano tutorial he's ever seen on YouTube. Well, that's cool, great. I love that you love the information and the teaching, but it's important for everybody to understand this is not saxophone stuff. I'm not really interested in the tool that we play. I'm interested in the music part, right? I use my saxophone to play these ideas. He plays the piano so that he can get these ideas around. So I'm interested in the ideas more so than I am the specific instruments. And I'm interested in the clarity part. So hopefully I've got some clarity for you today. Okay, so we wanna talk about these altered chords and, and why they're so dang hard to play over. I mean, I remember this experience for years, understanding dominant chords, but then when an altered chord would come up, I wouldn't know what to do. I'd play everything I knew and nothing would really work. And so what's up with that? So let's figure out what's going on. So I want you to know about altered chords today, but as always, I want you to know about the overall concept, like a bigger concept that we can apply to other things. So um, what I'm gonna say is uh, we need to know the correct melodies to play over these chords. So for instance, I bet you know many major melodies. You know may know how to play Happy Birthday, or you could sing a folk song, or you could whistle an R&B tune or something like that. So we know some of those. So um, I think I'm gonna go and uh, just use my ESP here and suggest that perhaps you don't know very many altered melodies. And that's exactly the problem. When we come up with an altered chord, maybe we have some intellectual knowledge. I know the altered scale, or I know this triad pair or whatever, but may not even know that, right? Here's the thing. We need to learn some melodies to go with these chords. It's gonna make an altered chord much less scary if you know a melody that fits over it. So that's gonna be our point of departure. So let's talk really quickly about what an altered chord is in the first place. Altered chords are dominant, simply dominant, okay? So if I play a simple C7 voicing on the piano, I'm gonna play C, E, and B flat. I'm gonna leave out the fifth. So that's all you need for a dominant chord. And now we have a dominant chord, there it is. So the definition of an altered chord is one that has an altered ninth and an altered fifth meaning a sharp nine or a flat nine. That was a flat nine and a sharp nine. And we could have a flat five or a sharp five. So it's, and when we say altered, it's sort of this kitchen sink kind of thing. We'll throw in all the alterations. The, the main alterations that we have are flat nine and sharp nine, flat five and sharp five. So how about if I play a dominant chord? Again, just those three notes are a dominant chord. And then I'll add a sharp nine and a sharp five. I went back and forth between a sharp five and a sharp nine and a flat five and a flat nine. So really it's, it's like a pizza, right? And you know, you can go get the Supreme pizza. They throw everything on there. You don't know exactly what you're gonna get. You order a Supreme pizza and you know whatever it is, it's gonna be a lot. Okay, so that's the altered chord. It's not specifically telling you, is it this five, that, no. Nah. It's just telling you it, it's gonna be a lot. So there you go, jazz, Pizza, I guess, is what we're talking about. So that's really all you need to know about these altar chords. They're dominant, and they got a bunch of toppings on them. Okay, there we go. So let's look at the sheet for a second. The first thing you're gonna notice here is there's no scale written out for you. That is not the approach we're taking today, because as I said earlier, I didn't mention anything about scales. I mentioned about melodies. The scale approach did not help me, and it did not help uh, most of the many, many students I've worked with over the years. 
I've used this analogy before. The, the scale is like the alphabet. Does the alphabet help you speak? Nah, not really, right? Um, if you want to know how to speak a language, learn a phrase. I want to go to the library. And now when you know that phrase, it's probably not a stretch to say, I want to go to the shopping center, or I want to go to the movies, or I want to go to my car. That one phrase gives you a toehold, and now you can do so much more. The alphabet does not do that for you. So yes, there's an altered scale, and sure, you know, you can find it out there. I'm suggesting that's not what you need to do right now. I'm suggesting let's learn a classic melody. The first line on the sheet is the first four measures of the fantastic Miles Davis, Bill Evans song called Blue in Green. And the second chord that we see is this altered dominant chord. So let me just play those four measures for you in case you don't know the song, you'll hear what this thing sounds like. There it is a couple times. And now, so I'm not sure if that chord sounded special to you, but the melody just fits inside that chord so well. And I've heard a lot of people play that tune, and that's where things go really haywire, trying to get that altered sound. Hey, by the way, before we go any further, um, look at my cool little Volkswagens. <laughs> uh, it was a couple videos ago, maybe 87 or something, I was wearing a Volkswagen shirt and I started getting all nostalgic about the Volkswagen bus I used to have. And I asked people to like, you know, send me a Volkswagen. I wouldn't mind having another one again. And I got stickers and photos and GIFs and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, so guess what else I got? Um, one of the watchers in Dusseldorf, Germany, sent me two little Volkswagens and, uh, and a little sax player. So that's awesome. That is awesome. So I'm really open to taking uh, the Volkswagens and anything else you got. <laughs> that was so cool. Thank you very much for sending that stuff in. All right, so getting back to this altered sound. This is how I finally came to terms with this particular chord. This is how I've helped many, many students come to terms with this chord and other chords. So again, the concept is, oh my God, here's a chord, what do I do with it? I don't sound good on this. Okay, that's the problem. And most teachers, most books, most systems, most schools will say, here's the chord, or rather, yeah, here's, you know, here's the scale to play with it. If you're lucky, maybe they'll say, here's the arpeggio to play with it. Um, so what I'm suggesting is that's not the way to go because I've tried it and it doesn't work. Um, I'm suggesting that what we want to do is learn a great melody that goes over that sound. So here's the melody we're going to use today. So over this A7 altered chord, there's a classic bebop lick. I can't remember who showed it to me, where I got it. It's something that Charlie Parker and Dizzy and everybody used to play, and it uses the sharp nine and the flat nine. It sounds like this. So it doesn't sound like very much on its own. It sounds like a major lick practically, right? Because it's not relative to the chord that we're playing. But that lick, sharp nine, flat nine, sharp nine, flat nine, sharp nine, flat nine, root, flat seven, and then it resolves perfectly to the third of the next chord. That is the lick I want you to know. So let me play it for you in context here. So I'm gonna be playing example number two from the sheet, and I'm just gonna loop those four measures and play it a couple times. So I'll improvise a little bit in the first measure and the last measure, but I'm gonna play that lick exactly as it is. So maybe you'll recognize this, but it's a fantastic melody that fits over this chord.
So now, how do we take it beyond just this lick? Well, let's do this. Look at the third line on the sheet. And in number three, you'll see that I'm embellishing. I'm using those same handful of pitches, but now I'm literally changing their order. Let me loop and play again for you. And I'll play what I've written here in the third uh, example, and then maybe I'll expand it from there. I'll just improvise with those notes a little bit, those notes from that classic melody given to us by Charlie Parker and Dizzy and whoever came before them. Okay, that is getting to the sound of an altered chord. That chord that used to be scary about seven minutes ago, right? We're using a lick, a melody, to help us understand the sound, to get used to the flavor, using that analogy, right? So now here's a fantastic question, like how would I know what lick to use? That's a really good question. As a younger, less experienced player, I had no idea. I was just stuck there with this chord that I couldn't use and, and didn't know what to do. Well, that is where you sign up for jazzwire.net. So Jazzwire is a community that I've started. We have hundreds of students from all around the globe. And it's not me teaching lessons like this. It's a community where we come in and work together. People are making incredible pr progress in a handful of weeks or in a month. So I hope you check out Jazzwire. And um, to help you do that, between now and May 1st, 2019, we have 50% off registration for getting into Jazzwire. So 50% off. Use the code DIGGINGSPRING and you will get in there. If you enjoy this approach, if you enjoy my approach to teaching, and if you feel like you need a little bit more guidance beyond just hit and miss YouTube videos, that's the place to get it done. And this is exactly the kind of thing that we're gonna dig into further there. So let's do this. Let's expand the idea just a little bit further. Let's look at the fourth item on the sheet. All I'm doing here is adding a note now to my lick. I had the sharp nine, I had the flat nine, I had the root, and I had the flat seven. So in the first couple examples, I was just using four of these pitches that came from this melody. Remember, we haven't yet talked about a scale, right? So we've got these four pitches. So I'm suggesting, eh, maybe let's add a fifth one. Okay, good question would be, well, I'm not signed up for Jazzwire, so no one's telling me what the fifth one is. And, um, hmm, wonder what that would be. Well, remember, we said it's a dominant chord, so let's add the third. So I'm suggesting you can add the third, right? But so you could hypothesize, well, it's a dominant chord, maybe the third will work. So in the fourth item on the sheet, you can see all those notes come from this classic melody with the addition of a third. So I've added one little note. So again, let me loop these four measures. I'm gonna play it for you as written, and then I'm just going to embellish. I'm just gonna somewhat randomly play those notes in that spot. Let's hear what this sounds like. I hope this is feeling empowering to you, how simple this was. And now, what's the next step? 
Play it a hundred times in a row. Play that exact thing over and over until you get used to the sound, how those notes function over that chord. Our lick happened to have four notes. And then we got fancy with it and added a note. You could randomly add a note. Trust your instincts, trust your ears. So this is the way to approach this stuff. So it works with this altered sound. So now you're not gonna get hung up by an altered chord. Put that chord on, loop it around like I was doing, repeating two measures, four measures, and play that sound. Memorize what the notes are. And now you have a way to go with it. And then sure, weeks, months down the road, do learn the scale and it'll have a context, it'll have meaning. So that should be a huge game changer for you guys. So I'm gonna play a couple choruses of this tune. I just love this song and uh, I'm gonna play a couple choruses on the way out. I really hope I'm gonna see you at jazzwire.net and 50% off between now and May 1st. So there's no reason not to jump in and get to work with all the musicians. By the way, when you come into Jazzwire, you get an evaluation. I do personally an evaluation of your playing. I let you know where you're at and give you a practice plan for six months, like step by step, from here's your strengths, here's your weaknesses, and here is my uh, estimation of how you can get ahead quickly. So if you're enjoying this stuff, you're gonna love that. All right, I'm gonna play Blue and Green for you. Thank you so much for tuning in. You're never gonna get freaked out by an altered chord again, I promise.